Welcome back to Winair Video and the August 2025 construction update on the Gordie Howe International Bridge, one of North America's boldest infrastructure projects. Whether you're a cross-border commuter, investor, or truck driver, here's the real story on the current progress, staffing, economic impact, and the bridge's iconic wildlife and architecture. As of today, the Gordie Howe Bridge is 98% complete. Crews are pushing into the final stretch with work focused on interior finishing at the customs buildings, installing cabinets, lighting, plumbing, and flooring. On the bridge deck itself, teams are wrapping up paving, setting up drainage, installing advanced fire suppression systems, and mounting safety and emergency barriers. Electrical and intelligent transportation systems are getting their final test, and road signs and markings are going on to both approached spans. Landscaping and facade details are underway ensuring the new crossing is ready to impress when it opens. The Bridge Authority still targets Fall 2025 opening, with September marked as a major goal. While delays remain possible, especially if custom facilities aren't handed over in time, the construction teams are pacing each other closely on both the Detroit and Windsor sides. No specific opening date is announced yet, but officials stress that only 2% of construction remains and the Canadian Border Services Agency has been installing equipment and training staff on site. The opening could slip into early 2026 if final checks or staffing don't go smoothly, but the fall 2025 is still the official messaging. Staffing is in full steam ahead. CBSA is recruiting and training up to 200 new border officers for the Gordie Howe Bridge. Local hiring is prioritized, with hundreds of applicants undergoing intensive training, including physical tests, psychological exams, and firearms certification. While most hires have been completed, the push is ongoing and up to several dozen additional officers could be brought in as contingency. U.S. Customs and Border Protection is also finishing its recruitment cycle, with teams moving in for training and operational checks as the fall date nears. The new 35% tariffs on American goods not covered by CUSMA plus a weaker Canadian dollar, around 69 cents USD, have hit businesses hard. Canadian exports to the US saw a sharp drop, more than 15% since April, especially in steel, auto parts, and select food products. There's a lot more to share. But before we start, I would like to ask for your subscription. These videos do take time and money to produce. By subscribing, you help the channel reach more like-minded people. It is free and helps with the little advertising commission Winair Video receives. To support the cost, our community will have to grow to 20,000 subscribers or more. So if you haven't already, please subscribe. It means a lot and I really do appreciate it. Mm -hmm. 
So, are the tariffs as bad as everyone thinks for the Gordie Howe Bridge? I'd like to say no, but I can't. Tariffs are very likely to lead to both higher tolls and reduced traffic volumes. The Gordie Howe Bridge's financial model depends on a steady high volume cross-border traffic, particularly from the automotive industry. With trade volumes plunging due to tariffs, the projected toll revenue has been slashed from estimates of 70 to 108 million annually to figures that may be far lower if the current trade war persists. There will be an impact. We will have to wait to see just how much. What we do know is the tariffs have triggered a marked reduction in cross-border vehicle and truck movements. In one recent month, border crossings at Windsor saw 67,000 fewer vehicles compared to the previous year. That's 67,000 less crossings in one month. A trend directly tied to tariffs, disrupting supply chains and prompting factory shutdowns. Industry experts and economic analysts agree bridge traffic will unquestionably be reduced if tariffs remain in place as the bridge opens. As a result, officials warn that higher tolls could be required to cover ongoing operating costs and to help recoup the $6.4 billion investment by Canada, especially since Canadians are the solely footing the bill for the bridge. Even at the maximum estimated annual income of $108 million, it will take Canada two to three generations to recoup the $6.4 billion cost. Lower traffic not only reduces revenue, but also undermines the original economic rationale for the bridge, reducing congestion and supporting regional prosperity, potentially leaving the bridge underutilized and costly. Windsor businesses are reporting delays and contract renegotiations. On the U.S. side, importers and manufacturers in Michigan and Ohio fear rising costs and reduced supplies. The bridge designed to boost commercial traffic now faces a real test. The business case for cross-border shipments in the first year after opening is weaker than planned, but long-term benefits are expected as trade adapts. However, unless the tariff situation is resolved, the Gordie Howe International Bridge is expected to see both declining traffic and higher tolls. These outcomes will make it harder to recoup the investment and could further dampen economic prospects for the Windsor-Detroit region. Enough about the tariffs. Good news for local nature lovers. The Peregrine Falcon nesting box is a confirmed part of the final build. The custom-designed box with a remote operated camera and access platform will be installed under the bridge deck in 2025. This initiative helps preserve vital habitat and showcases the bridge's commitment to sustainability. The bridge's towering pylons are not receiving full paint coverage initially considered for aesthetic reasons and environmental protection the plan was dropped due to cost savings long-term maintenance reductions and decisions to showcase the natural finish personally this is a disappointment for a few reasons one the towers would look awesome if painted second it indicates they have gone over budget on the build by at least 30 to 50 million. Showcasing that natural finish is most likely to increase the future maintenance and costs of the towers. Instead, 
The bridge tower's murals removed from the jump systems, like the Canadian maple leaf and the U.S. Stars and Stripes, painted by Indigenous and Detroit area artists during construction, will pay tribute to the region's heritage and will be visible from local streets and the river. Quite the trade-off. And weren't the murals always planned to be displayed? The bridge is nearly done, but its future is more dramatic than ever. Will it open on time? Will it be on budget? Can businesses recover from tariffs? Will the Falcons survive? Drop your thoughts in comments below. Give us a thumbs up, hit subscribe, and ring the notification bell so you don't miss the next video's exclusive drone footage and commentary. This is Bob Jones, and I will see you in the next video.